The cardiovascular system, also known as the circulatory system, consists of our heart, the blood vessels, as well as the blood. Now, the heart is basically a pump. In fact, it consists of two individual pumps that are connected in series with respect to one another, so next to one another. We have a pump on the right side that consists of the right atrium and the right ventricle, and we have a pump on the left side that consists of the left atrium and the left ventricle. Now, unlike skeletal muscle, which is actually attached to our bone and contracts with the bone, the heart is not actually attached to any bone. The heart consists of cardiac muscle, which forms a web-like net that contracts upon itself. Now, what exactly is the function of our heart? Well, the heart essentially creates that hydrostatic pressure that is needed to move the blood through the blood vessels of our body. Now, what exactly is a blood vessel? Well, a blood vessel is a conduit. It's a pipe that essentially allows the movement, the flow of blood through our body. And the blood is this fluid-like substance that consists of many things. It contains the blood plasma, which has the ions, the electrolytes, water, as well as proteins such as albumin. We also have red blood cells inside our blood that carry the oxygen. And we have different waste products such as urea, ammonia, as well as carbon dioxide. Now, what exactly is the purpose? What exactly is the function of the cardiovascular system. Well, the cardiovascular system is used to actually bring and deliver the nutrients and electrolytes to the cells, the tissues, and organs found inside our body and the blood. Our cardiovascular system also takes in the waste products produced by the cells and it brings those waste products to the proper organs of the body, such as our skin and kidneys, that are involved in excretion of those waste products. Now, our cardiovascular system is said to be a closed cardiovascular system. It's a closed circuit. And what that basically means is all that blood travels throughout the blood of, uh, vessels and it never actually leaves those blood vessels. Now, that's not to say that the blood isn't actually filtered. In fact, our kidneys are responsible for filtering our blood, but our blood is reabsorbed back into the body in our kidneys and only our waste products are essentially excreted to the outside portion of the body. So the cardiovascular system forms a closed circuit, which means that the blood remains inside the circuit, inside the blood vessels, the entire time. Now, if we take this entire loop, entire closed circuit, we can divide the closed circuit into two systems. We have the systemic circulation and we have the pulmonary circulation. Systemic circulation simply means we carry the oxygenated blood from the heart into the tissues and then we take the deoxygenated blood, blood from the tissues and bring it back to our heart. But pulmonary circulation means we take that deoxygenated blood from the heart and we move it into the lungs and then we oxygenate our blood in the lungs and we bring the oxygenated blood back into the heart. And we'll discuss these two systems in more detail towards the end of the lecture. Now, there are two types of blood vessels that are found inside our body. We have a blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart and this is known as an artery. So by definition, an artery is a blood vessel that always carries our blood away from the heart. And one easy way to remember this is by remembering that a way starts with A and so does our artery. Now, the arteries most of the time carry oxygenated blood, but there are times, as we'll see in just a moment, in which an artery can actually carry deoxygenated blood. 
Now, the arteries, these blood vessels, come in many different sizes. The largest artery in the body is known as our aorta, and then we have the arteries followed by smaller arteries known as arterioles, and finally our capillaries. Now, the second type of blood vessel is the vein, and if the artery carries blood away from the heart and to the tissues, then our veins bring our blood to the heart and away from our tissues and organs. Now, most of the vein, most of the veins in the body actually carry deoxygenated blood, but there are examples, as we'll see in a moment, in which veins actually ca uh, carry oxygenated blood. And just like arteries vary in size, we also have a range of different size values for our veins. The largest vein is known as our vena cava. We also have the smaller veins, we have the venules, very tiny veins, and then we have the capillaries. Now, the capillaries are the blood vessels, very tiny blood vessels, that connect the arteries to our veins. And in the capillaries, this is where we have the exchange of nutrients for the waste products taking place within our organs and within our tissues. Now, most of the time, within our organs, we have a single system of capillaries, but sometimes, in certain organs, we have a portal system, and that simply means we have two consecutive network of capillaries that are next to one another. Now, we have several portal systems in our body, as we'll discuss in the next several lectures. We have one in our brain, we also have one in the kidneys and our small intestine. Now, the final thing that I'd like to mention is the pathway that the blood actually follows within our cardiovascular system. So here we're going to show that the cardiovascular system of the human body is in fact a closed circuit. So let's take a look at the following diagram, which basically describes the simplified diagram for the cardiovascular system. Now, if my body essentially points this way, then this is the right side of my body, this is the left side of my body, and this is exactly what this diagram shows. So we have the right lung, the left lung, this is the right portion of the heart, and this is the left portion of our heart. These are the capillaries of the organs found in the upper portion of my body, and these, these are the capillaries of the organs found in the lower portion of our body. So let's begin by taking a look at the heart. So we have the right side, the right pump, that consists of the right atrium and our left uh, right ventricle. And this portion is the left side, it's the left pump of the heart, it contains our left atrium and the left ventricle. Now, the atrium is the portion of the heart, it's the compartment of the heart that accepts the blood, but it's the ventricle that contains the strong cardiac muscle that is responsible for creating that, uh, that contraction and that hydrostatic pressure that moves the blood through the blood vessels of our body. So let's begin at a certain portion of our cardiovascular system. Let's suppose we begin in the right atrium of the heart. So number one. So the deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium of the heart. So remember the atrium always accepts the blood into our heart. Now, the blue arrow basically designates the movement of deoxygenated blood, but the red arrow designates the movement of oxygenated blood, blood that contains our red blood cells with the oxygen. Now, from our right atrium, our blood flows through this valve system and into the right ventricle, so number two. It then enters the right ventricle. And this is essentially where the systemic circulation ends and the pulmonary circulation begins. So remember, pulmonary circulation means we take the deoxygenated blood, we bring it to our lungs where we oxygenate that blood and then we bring the oxygenated blood back to our heart. Heart. So, number two is where the pulmonary circulation begins. 
So the right ventricle basically pumps the deoxygenated blood into this artery that diverges into the left pulmonary artery that brings the blood to the left lung and the right pulmonary artery, this artery here, that brings the blood to the right lung. Now notice that an artery always brings blood away from our heart and this is exactly what happens within the pulmonary arteries but in both of these arteries we have deoxygenated blood that is being carried so it's not always true that arteries carry oxygenated blood so let's go to number four in number four we have the blood moves from these pulmonary arteries into smaller arteries and arterioles and eventually they move into the capillary system that is found in the lung we have the right lung and we have the left lung now within the lung we have an exchange taking place we basically bring oxygen into the blood and we expel our carbon dioxide from our uh, from our blood into the outside environment so when we inhale we bring in that oxygen into our blood and when we exhale we basically remove that carbon dioxide from our system from our blood now in number five once we actually oxygenate this blood within the lungs we then take those oxygen uh, that oxygenated blood and we move it through the venules and through our pulmonary vein. So we have the right pulmonary vein and the left pulmonary vein that both carry the oxygenated blood. So once again, we see that veins always carry blood to the heart, but they can carry both oxygenated as well as deoxygenated blood. In this case, they bring the oxygenated blood into number six, which is basically our left atrium. So once again, the atrium of the heart always receives that blood. So in number six, it then moves into the left atrium of the heart. Now, from six, once again, we have this valve system that moves our oxygenated blood into our left ventricle. And it's the left ventricle that creates the hydrostatic pressure, the hydrostatic force that essentially propels and moves that oxygenated blood filled with nutrients into the largest artery of the body known as our aorta. And from the aorta, we basically diverge our aorta into the ascending and descending aorta. So this is number nine and number nine. The ascending aorta moves the oxygen blood into the capillary system of the organs found in the upper body, and this brings it into the organs found in the lower portion of our body. So the neck and our brain, while this is the leg portion of our body. Now, in number 10, we basically have the oxygen blood is brought into the organs where we have an exchange taking place. So the cells, tissues, and organs pick up the nutrients and electrolytes that they actually need to survive. They also pick up our oxygen and they give off the carbon dioxide as well as our waste products. And then our deoxygenated blood travels into the tiny venules then into the veins and all these veins basically converge into a single vein known as the vena cava. Now the superior vena cava is basically the upper vein that carries all that deoxygenated blood away from the upper organs. This is the superior vena cava. Superior means above. While the inferior uh, vena cava where inferior means below basically is our single blood vessel that carries our deoxygenated blood from the organs in the lower portion of our body and to number one. So notice that number one is simply our right atrium. It's where we began. So notice that we began at point one and we ended at point one. And so this basically shows that the cardiovascular system is in fact a closed circuit. We have a closed cardiovascular system. 
So once again, our pulmonary circulation essentially begins in number two, our left, our uh, right ventricle, and it ends within number six, our left atrium. While our systemic circulation begins in seven, our left ventricle, and it ends at one, our right atrium. 